between hosting neighborhood pool parties, the convenience of cooling off when the mercury rises, and having a solid excuse to buy cute air mattresses. There are plenty of reasons why buying a property with a pool may seem like a no-brainer. But despite all the pros, consider cons before you dive into a pool purchase. To give us more details on that, we have your favorite real estate expert in the studio with us. So let's talk to him. What are some of the cons that we must consider before we purchase a property with a pool? Thank you for being here, Jay. It's good to be here, Molly. All right. Sure. So mm -hmm. um, what are some of the cons we must consider uh, if you want to purchase a property that has a pool? Well, the, one of the cons is that make sure you know about the costs because it's wonderful to have a pool party. We all want to jump in there and have those games and the water balloons going. But understand, your neighbor's kids, the party is not going to fund the pool. As long as you can handle the cost, that's okay. All right. So what, uh, cost is one factor because sure. you have to fill the pool mm -hmm. with lots of water. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and maintenance, you know, you have to have maintenance guys come in to, uh, to maintain. Plus heating. Mm. Heating is, the, the, the utility bill is, can go up quite high. Make sure you're prepared for it. All right. So make sure you, you get all that information. That's right. On the utility costs. Okay. Absolutely. Is there anything else? Time management. Mm, I don't know what that means. Absolutely. Beyond the financial commitment is the issue of time in keeping the pool clean and scrubbing the pool down and maintaining the water, checking the temperature, treating, not just making sure that the environment, there's no lease coming out of all the equipment that you have. That will take considerable time. All just be right. ready for it. Okay. Well... That's a good good tip. Is there yes. anything else people need to know? Well, yes. The most important, the, the vital, I would say safety first. Mm. And by that, what I mean is make sure that the, the pool is safe, especially from your neighbors of four to protect your neighbor's kids and your kids. All right, so if they, you know, if you're not home and the kids, your neighborhood kids come and jump into the pool, who is responsible? You are, the owner is. Mm -hmm. And therefore everything from having the proper uh, height in your uh, Fence. you know, the fences mm -hmm. and all the proper safety taken by the city, that has to be done. It should right. be right. It's, called okay. it's called liability. Okay. Well, yes. <laughs> I'm sure people are not thinking about that yes. when they're uh, considering sure. having a pool. For sure. For sure. Okay. Because safety is important. Yes. And kids Very. sometimes, you know, they are impulsive. Mm -hmm. They don't think about all of these things. Sure. And if they see a nice pool with lots of water and it happens to be a hot day exactly. and there's nobody at home, they yes. might just jump into the pool. Exactly. This is a very important factor. That doesn't mean you shouldn't get a pool, but as long as you're ready and you are aware of the costs, mm -hmm. the time, and the rules around safety, you're good to go. Okay. Is there anything else? Well, let's talk about... Uh, one of the precautions is when you're buying a pool is two things. One is hire a proper certified pool company. Mm -hmm. that can go in there with the proper gadgets and make sure that the pool, the safety, the water is not going to seep out, is all of that is proper. Mm -hmm. The second thing is search and employ. In other words, you search yourself of what the bylaws might be from a reasonable perspective and employ your lawyer to go and check the bylaws, check with your city council, but make sure you get that in writing that your pool is there and to what extent it is certified and if there have been any changes. Mm, very important. Another thing that is, I think, absolutely important is mm -hmm. whenever people purchase real estate, yes. they must always consider uh, it from a resale point of view. Well, that was going to be my next point. Okay, Jay. Okay. Tell us it, about it. It's called value added. And depending upon your community where you live, 
the pool can either add to the value or it can take away. Because not everybody wants a pool. Not everybody wants a pool. And remember this, if you decide to remove the pool, it here's a little costly. tip. Find out the cost to remove. You can't just fill it up with mud and be done. There are proper procedures in place. So I'm not saying not to get a pool. If that's what you want, there's a percentage of people that will pay to get that pool. I will be searching left and right for that pool, your pool, but just know what you're getting into. All right. I hope that helps, Molly. All right. So there you go. Uh, if you want to purchase a property that mm -hmm. has a pool, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with Enjoy. that. Enjoy. Absolutely. But before you incur such a heavy expense, yes. look at all the pros and cons. And exactly. if you have any questions, where can they reach you, Jay? 647-273-1119. My phone is, is always with me, and I look forward to hearing from you regarding pools, or any other questions that you have regarding your real estate needs. All right, so there you go. Uh, thank you so much for coming here, Jay, and you don't go anywhere. We have lots more for you. Thank you for it's being here. It's always Jay. a pleasure. All right, come okay. back again. You got it. All right. There are some vital life skills that are not being taught in our schools. To give us more information on how to be prepared for life, we have in our studio Mr. Brian Nugent. He is a published author and industry expert in the field of wellness, business, and life management. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming him to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. All right. So you are an industry expert. You are a published author. A lot of things that you have accomplished in your life. What are some of the things that you wish they had taught you in school? 
Uh, you know what? First of all, I want to say thank you for having me here today. Right? Our pleasure. Uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, I wish I had in school, but I first always want to acknowledge the great things that the teachers, the administration, the school boards that have been doing out there. Mm. Uh, before I do talk about what they need to teach kids in school, which I learned, there are schools and curriculums um, throughout the country, right, that are touching upon this. But the goal is, can we do this on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. Can we integrate this on a weekly basis so that these kids can become conditioned to learning this all the time, not just once a month or mm -hmm. once a quarter, but all the time. So the six key points that I would like to see and research has shown so that we can grow these children to be productive, positive, impactful citizens within society. And I do have my little cheat sheet here today, right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, is one is life competency skills, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of kids come out of school, they don't have the life competency skills to deal with adversity, to deal with challenges, to deal with trials and tribulations. So that's a very important one. So we have to teach these kids time management skills. We have to teach these kids um, goal setting, right? We have to teach these kids um, habit development, these types of elements, right? The next one, believe it or not, is we already do computer science, but computer cybernetics. Mm. So what I'm talking about here is we're living in the digital era, right? This is nothing new, right? So we need a lot more coders, people who are coding um, for computers, for our cell phones. Everything is computer language now. Right. Mm. And there's a shortage of coders coming out. But more importantly, in conjunction with that is cybersecurity. Mm. Right. We're living in an era right now where if something bad were to happen to you, if you got assaulted, right, the police can come and help you. Right. Mm. If your house burned down, the police could come down and the fire department could help you. But if your computer gets hacked, right, if your business gets shut down because somebody hacked into your files, right? There's no cyber police yet, mm -hmm. right? So that's another thing we need. So cybersecurity and more coding, right? Okay. okay. Our next one is environmental studies, mm. all right? What is the environmental footprint that we're putting on the planet? A lot of schools are doing great jobs in regards to making sure, educating the kids, but it needs to be something that's done on a daily basis, understanding mm. recycling, understanding the impact of how much water consumption, understanding you know plastic and all these things that we use on a daily basis and saying, okay, what's my carbon footprint? What impact am I making on the planet? Because we obviously have to think about future generations, mm. right? The next one that's very important is financial literacy. Very okay. important. Very, very critical one, right? I wish coming out of school, right, I had a lot more knowledge. Now, being the age that I am, I do have the financial literacy. Helped a lot of people. We have it in my book, Don't Live Another Day Without Me, about that. But understanding, like, investments, understanding um, debt and credit, understanding um, taxes and budgeting, these types of elements really need to be taught to young people and how to go about doing that so that when they come out, because right now, the average Canadian has $25,000 in consumer debt, and that's not from their house, right? We're talking about strictly on their credit card, okay? It's a bad debt. That's bad debt, right? And we're talking about the average Canadian has only up to $187 after they paid all their bills. Think about this for a moment. They have $187 left over. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not a lot of money, that's not right? Money. So we obviously need to teach these kids, right, how to do that better, right? I think some people might be watching at home right now saying, well, that's mom and dad's job. Well, maybe mom and dad doesn't really know that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, another thing that we really need to teach our kids are is health management, right? Very important. We already have, you know, physical education in the school systems, which is great. But I propose that we should be having it 45 to 60 minutes every single day. Every single day. Every single day. Because when you sweat, when you work your body, right, and you work on your physical literacy skills, it really helps release a lot of stress, reduces anxiety, right? It helps people that are depressed. Okay. Nutrition. Okay. So important. Right. <laughs> These kids are eating such unhealthy food. Right. Obesity is at its highest. Yeah. Right. So learning nutrition and the elements of that is like how do you cook for yourself mm -hmm. right and planting your own foods right how do you plant your own foods right a lot of kids in the west unfortunately not all of them but they've been shown certain foods that in europe like 
broccoli, mm -hmm. right? Asparagus, and they have no idea what that is, right? Wow. So that's not really good. Um, another one is life competency skills. Okay, so I'd like mm -hmm. us to focus a little bit yeah. on that because I'll tell you why I'm a little bit concerned about that because uh, we have a lot of foreign students and they're coming from other countries. They're living on their own. They're paying their bills. They're working mm -hmm. and they're going to school. Mm -hmm. Right, so that makes them really different as people because mm -hmm. they they're growing up, taking yes. responsibility yes. for themselves. Yes. So our kids are going to be competing with these kids. Mm -hmm. This is where my concern comes from okay. because when it comes to applying for jobs, mm -hmm. you know, someone who is has is not working, staying yes. at home, you know, taking selfies all the time, has no <laughs> clue what's happening in the real world, yes. <laughs> right? And now they're going to be competing with people mm -hmm. who are living on their own, paying their own rent, yes. right? Doing their own groceries, making their own food. Mm -hmm. May not be always very healthy. Yeah. Well, that's, we don't mm -hmm. know about but that. But responsibility the responsibility is much higher, right? yes. Um, our kids don't stand a chance. Mm. And that's where... I have an issue with our educational system because okay. they're not preparing them mm. to face. Because when it comes to job, yes. you know, applying for a job, when you have someone who is so mature, same age, yeah. but totally mature because they've been living and being responsible, living on their own, and then someone who's never even had to pay their own phone bill. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, so there's a great disparity in terms of being prepared for life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's where my concern is coming yeah. from. So talk to some parents what okay. they need to do and talk to perhaps our Minister of Education. Okay. What are some of the things mm -hmm. that we need to incorporate intentionally into our curriculum, right? In addition to everything else that yeah. you have uh, just mentioned. So one of the number one thing people have to do in order to change their life, right? is make a decision, mm. right? And a decision doesn't start with somebody else. A decision starts with yourself, mm. right? So okay. before you can make any significant change in your life, you have to decide, okay, wait a minute. I see what these problems are. I see what's going on. And so instead of shifting the blame and saying, oh, you know what? It's my teacher's job or it's the government's job or it's the principal's job. You need to say as a parent, it's my job. Yes, absolutely. Right? It's my job. Yeah. And the moment you do that, and the moment you make that decision, now you have the power. You see, power is lost when I say, hey, you need to do this. You need to change. You need to make this better. Mm -hmm. Right? The moment I start to say, you know what? I need to decide. I need to change. I need to decide that I need to improve. I need to decide that it's up to me to make this situation better is the moment significant and great change happens in life. So before we even get into what needs to be incorporated in the school curriculum in order to enhance the level of life skills and competency skills for children, the number one thing parents have to do is saying, okay, this is my child. I brought him or her into the world, right? What can I do from home that I can make their life better? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Right, good. And better doesn't necessarily always mean make it easier. No. Better means, am I setting my child up for success, mm -hmm. right? So let me give you a basic example of that. Mm -hmm. Most parents, you know, I'm older, right? I'm in my 40s, right? When I grew up, it was normal to have a job. That was normal. You had a job, you went to school. Today, right, if you have a job and go to school, people are like, oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. How is this even possible? This is Corporal punishment. <laughs> Why do your parents have you working and going to school? Let's be honest, right? For us that are my age or older, we know that it's totally capable. But we have to show them, hey, one, it's possible. And two, learning the time management skills, right? So you start off really simple by giving them basic responsibilities. Clean your room. Do the dishes. Do the laundry. This is, doesn't sound complicated, but these are things that must be incorporated. Okay, so these three things mm -hmm. should be part of their daily routine. Absolutely. Not as, because I think this is where a lot of parents mm -hmm. make a mistake, because I've seen them say, okay, if you do the dishes, you're going to get paid this much money. Exactly, you right? Know, I, I don't think that's a really good strategy, because they no. live at home as part of the family. Mom cooks or dad cooks, somebody, you know, yes. somebody's paying the bill, someone is doing, so who is paying the 
them. <laughs> you know, if yeah. everybody has to be paid, they, they need to be paid as well, Absolutely. right? And I think that these are some fundamental things that mm -hmm. need to be brought back because families used to be like that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. everybody pitched in. Exactly. Now it's like mom has to do the work, I'm watching TV, bring it here, you know, and after they eat, they leave the plates right there and yes. walk away. Mm -hmm. And parents are like, okay, you know what, I don't want to have an argument, whatever. I, it's easier for me to just do and, that. And, and one of the key things why we got into this pitfall, mm -hmm. right, is oftentimes parents, especially, you know, my generation, is they realize, oh my goodness, mom and dad treated me this way when I was young. So you know what, when I get older, I'm going to do the complete opposite. But as we've seen, the complete opposite doesn't work. It doesn't work. It no. doesn't work. It's very obvious. We see that with, you know, the younger generation going into the workforce, the, the level of entitlement, right? You know, it's not unusual as a business owner. I have other friends that are other business owners. And there's government regulations when it comes to six days, sick days, grievance days, et cetera, et cetera. And there are people calling in saying, I'm not coming into work today. And HR will say, well, why are you not coming in? Are you sick? And they're like, no, I'm not sick. They're like, okay, are you on vacation day? They're like, no, I'm not on vacation day. They're like, okay, so what day is it? They're like, I'm just not coming in. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I'm and that's a problem. <laughs> that's a big problem. Right. That's a problem. Because I've also heard, and you know, as I told you, we we work with some uh, young people, young adults, and once in a while, we would hear people say, "I will go and look for a job and do it if I like it." Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. I don't like the job, I'm staying at home. Yeah, you know, and that's a problem also. Right? Big problem. That's a big problem. Uh, one of the things that we have, um, you know, really conditioned our kids or even ourselves to some degree is if it's not fun, don't do it. Mm. Right. Last time I checked, it wasn't fun to pay taxes, but I knew that it was good to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I knew yeah. it was good to do it because one, I'm contributing to society. I'm doing my part and. Mm. It's mandatory in order for make the things work, right? right? When so we... that goes back to the same thing where, listen, things are not always going to be fun, mm -hmm. right? Things you have to do, don't focus on what's going to be fun. Focus on what's going to be right, right, right? And it is right to do the right things as in like be focused, be responsible, be reliable, have mm -hmm. good communication skills, good listening skills, these types of things, right? But a lot of times when people deal with adversity, once it's in front of them, and they're like, oh my goodness, this is so difficult. I can't handle this, right? Everybody around them says, okay, well, if it wasn't fun and you were scared and you couldn't do it, then don't do it. Don't when do a lot it. of times, let's be honest. Life is not it. like that. That's right. Life doesn't give you those kinds mm -hmm. of options, right? Yes. And we all grew up with, uh, I know, in our families, everyone was taught, if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, because that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. Everybody had to, to work. That doesn't mean that we had to, you know, as kids go go to and get a job like that. Mm -hmm. But still, this was, you know, it was an honorable thing, yes. you know. So we need to bring back mm -hmm. some of those old-fashioned values mm -hmm. back into our society. Yep. Because otherwise, our kids don't stand a chance. Well, they're already not standing a chance. It's already very difficult and challenging for them. Um, you know, anxiety, depression is at an all-time high. All suicide time high. is at an all-time high. So the question is, well, how did we get here if we were doing all the right things? Listen, this program's not about me trying to knock the parents around the world or, I mean, across Canada or, or Ontario. There's a lot of parents doing some amazing things, yes. right? So let, let me be very clear. The key is how do we get them all collectively, right, doing all the right things, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to get back down to the basics, mm -hmm. right? And the basics is essentially, yes, sir, no, sir, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, yes. right? These types Important of things, things. right? Uh, you skip school, guess what? You know what? Your grades are going to be docked, mm -hmm. right? You can't always allow someone off the hook because at the end of the day, that's not reality. If you were to drive your car, you get a speeding ticket, a police officer is not going to let you off the hook. That's the way it works. If you don't pay your credit card, the interest rate's going to go up. That's reality, That's right? Reality. So the reality of the situation is we got to get back to the basics where when I was in school, hey, you failed, we're going to keep you behind, right? The, that's how it works. That's how it works. No <laughs> kid gets left behind. Yeah. I don't agree with that, right? No. Because at the end of the day, what we're doing, unfortunately- Rewarding bad behavior. It's not only rewarding bad behavior, and you know, this is not to, you know, uh, make anybody look bad is 
you know, I, I remember a famous quote that went like this. Sometimes we could be sincere, but we can be sincerely wrong. Yeah. So as a parent, I have very noble intentions to make your life better, make it easier, you know, try to make you feel good about yourself. And those are all beautiful things. But if I'm doing that under the context and it's a lie, what I'm doing is where the term we've heard a lot is I'm giving you a false sense of security. That's right. So essentially it's like you want your kid to be strong and powerful and be a good citizen. But if you build that house on sand, it's going to fall apart. Absolutely. Right? Not Your kid can't be amazing at everything. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. Right? I've been very successful, but not successful at everything, just successful at a handful of things, and I stuck with that. Mm -hmm. Right? So we got to get back to the basics, which is teaching responsibility, giving you chores, clean mm -hmm. your room, right? You know, you're not going to have to pass this class. You, you, you didn't have the proper grades. We're keeping you behind. Mm -hmm. Right? That's life. Because then what happens is, as much as at that moment we'll say, oh my God, we so feel so sorry for Johnny. At the end of the day, you're not giving Johnny a false sense of security. Yes. Because what happens is, which always happens, is they go into the real world, right? And they get exposed to reality. Yes. And then they're like, I can't deal with this. That's right. Right? And the only reason why they got there was because we gave them, we built a house on sand. And a house needs to be built on strong foundation like concrete. Absolutely. I want to talk to you a little bit about this book. And the title of your book is Don't Live Another Day Without Me. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Okay. So Don't Live Another Day Without Me is the book talking to you, the reader who's walking by. And it says, hey, don't live another day without me. So when you see this book, the book is saying to you, hey, don't live another day without me. I can help change your life, right? And in this book, right, it focuses on changing your life, right? Okay, it says the only self-empowerment book you'll ever need, what your parents need to know, school and teach you. And it's about mastering your mind, your body, your relationships, your work, your money, technology, spirituality, and the government, right? All right. So it's really a full encompassing book to help people to say, hey, you know what? If I need to get my mind right, oh, I could go to this book. Oh, you know what? My body's not right. Oh, I can go to Don't Live Another Day Without Me. You know what? My money situation's not working. I can go to Don't Live Another Day Without Me. So we wanted one book all in one place so that people didn't have to buy a money book, didn't have to buy a body book, didn't have to buy a relationship book. It's all in one book to help change your life. All right. So if you'd like to get a copy of this, contact us. Thank you so much for writing such a great book. And this is really, really amazing conversation. Thank that you. we had, and I'm sure it's going to be very, very helpful to a lot of people. So if you liked what you heard, uh, let us know about it, and we will definitely invite um, Brian to come back and share mm -hmm. some more of his thoughts with us. Thank you Thank for being you. here. Thanks for having me, Molly. Much appreciated. Our pleasure. Don't go anywhere. We have lots more for you. All I wanted was to see a movie. One down, please. I can't sell downstairs tickets to you people. How dare they? I could afford to buy the more expensive ticket. I run my own business. <laughs> But they refuse to take my money. They left me there all night. On what charge? They said I didn't pay the theater tax. But it was really about color. Sister Desmond, appeal this conviction and your community will stand behind you. Do you have any idea what this will do to us? So what are you going to do? Make it right. Viola Desmond's case inspired Nova Scotia's civil rights movement. She was pardoned 63 years later based on the injustice of her conviction.